This video is brought to you by Raycon. We've gotten our first look at the new bat suit, the raw bat, bat and bat bat suit. Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, it's got some new things going on. It's got a clothy head bit, maybe, and a leather bit at the front. Yep. A gun for the chest symbol. Yep. Is it the, the gun that shot his parents, or does he just like guns? It's a really good point. And also, mm. new for this particular bat suit, it's supposed to be reminiscent of a bat. <gasps> yeah. All oh, right, really. Mm -hmm. So what are the other ones reminiscent of? Just grey sad men, I think. <laughs> well, they've nailed it, haven't they? They really have. You know what else we'd really love, though? Aside from Grace Sapp. Is it a like? Man. Click it's on a, a like. like in the video. Yeah, Click et cetera like. and so forth. Yes. You know what I mean. You get it. I tried to weave it in. It didn't really work, but fuck it. We're here, aren't we? We're doing most iconic bat suits. Yeah. Maybe 10, maybe less, maybe more. Uh, we probably haven't included one that you really like, but if so, we've included on our podcast, The Weekly Planet. That's Listen right. To that instead. If I can suggest a phrase, I can't believe you didn't say, and then the bat suit that you like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a really good spot to start with would be the original Detective Comics uh, suit that Bill Finger designed, redesigned. Yes. Because the original, original bat suit is terrible. Oh my God, it's so bad. Yeah, it's not anything. <laughs> it's got these big, super stiff wings. Yep. You couldn't go through a doorway with no. them on. Domino mask. Red. It's red. It's red for some reason. It's like the new one though. Yeah, it's, oh my God, maybe that's a nod. Maybe that's a nod. Let's read into that and say it's a nod. Uh, but the Bill Finger version, it's pretty much the template for everything that's come since. That's right. But it has purple gloves. What have you got though? It's an iconic one and it's a ridiculous one, but I think the 1960s Batman TV series Batsuit. Sure. Speaking of lavender. Yeah. Because it's got some it's got colours. It's got... It's got life. It's got... It's satiny. But I mean, that, speaking of that iconic yellow chest symbol, mm. it wasn't invented for the Batman TV series, but the reason that exists is because they were like, we're going to move to TV. Batman's a hot, hot property. We've got to... Scorching. We've got we to we trademark everything. And they were like, well, you can't trademark a squiggly black <laughs> picture of a bat. That's too vague. So they're That's like, what, if we, put, we? what yeah. if we put the yellow oval behind it? And they're like, yes. Perfect. And of course, that obviously took off in multiple other suits and movies. The one that I think is the most iconic from the live action stuff. I don't I don't love the Batman 89 one. Okay. I think it's a really fair shot at a first time serious adaptation. Yeah. But the Batman Returns suit. Yeah. That, that he gets so the difference is, there was the, the the Batman 89 version, it's sort of got realistic musculature on the yes. front. And the, the Batman Returns version sort of more of a mechanised... It's like an Art Deco kind of stuff. Yeah, it kind of is, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, like, you know, I, I like most of the live-action ones. There's some John Schumacher stuff in there that I don't necessarily care for. And it's not just the nipples. I think there's just some <laughs> dumb silver stuff in there going on. But I mean, the, that, especially the first two, darkened up Batman's costume generally. Yes. Like the, the, uh, the idea of an all-black bat suit sort of seeped into other... Things, yeah. whether it be animation or, or the comic books or what have sure. you, and then we at this point we've sort of found a middle ground where it's kind of grey suit, black cloak. Yeah, absolutely, it's pretty sick. Uh, speaking of that though, the movies. Yes, the Batman the animated series really spun off. The Tim Burton movies. It's yes. not obviously the same universe, but mm -hmm. the reason that exists is because of those movies. Yeah, right. And I really like the clean lines and the iconic look of that suit in that series. And it does, it changes as it kind of goes. Uh -huh. But I think it's in a really simple kind of pure form and it mm -hmm. moves really well so it's not too complicated. Yes. So, you know, when he's fighting, it looks good. When he's stationary, it looks good. When it's a silhouette, it looks good. Yep. When the lightning strikes behind him, it looks oh good. Oh, my God, it looks so good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's chiseled. He's got that giant V-shaped yeah. V shaped body. Exactly. It's real good. It's got the, got the utility belt. What's in there? Mystery. They're just yellow boxes. Whatever. <laughs> who, yeah. who knows? Yeah, and I guess off the back of that, I really like the complete redesign of the Batman Beyond suit. Oh, my Again, goodness, Again, it's, yes. it's obviously a different Batman and a different yeah. era. You look at it and you know who it is, even though it's very different in a lot. Yeah. Well, in some ways. Terry McGinnis. What's interesting I like about that one is that when we went to Batman Beyond, it was, again, this kind of stylized, very simple kind of mm. like jet black with just the red symbol on it. But then when it moved to comic books, we got versions of it that were more kind of realistic. Yeah, sure. They were less cartoony but more real world. And you could yep. see, what does his mouth look like? Yes. What does this, you know, what do the chest panels look like? It isn't just flat black. It's yeah. kind of, you know, again, it's mechanized and it's kind of like, it's a tech suit. Yeah. And if we jump over to video games briefly, there's a lot of good stuff in the Arkham games. I don't like the big clunky kind of uh, robotic Iron Man-y one that he kind of ends up... Yeah, right, uh -huh. in. But 
they'll adapt a lot of the ones from different mediums into that, including the future Batman one. And what does that look like in this different universe? Yeah. There's some interesting, iconic, mechanised bat suits, but there, it, it, there, a balance does need to be struck between, well, he's using technology to fight crime because he's just a man, yeah. but also you don't want him to be in the Iron Man suit and he can fly yeah. and he's got superhuman strength and et cetera, which is fine for Batman Beyond because it's, it's a future we're not at yet. There are good storylines in which he does have a cool mechanised suit. So like the Dark Knight Return, obviously we should talk about that yeah. is the iconic sort of he needs it he's he's built it to take down superman yeah. because superman represents the government who he doesn't believe in anymore and he just wants to really punch superman to show him who's boss kind of thing i think they also did a really good job of adapting that for batman v superman yeah. i don't love that fight at all absolutely not it's, it's I, astoundingly bad but as a live action batman yeah. Mechanized suit. The difference is that in Dark Knight Returns, he has a reason for fighting Superman. Yes, you mean a good good reason. Sure, exactly. And in in Batman v Superman, less so. But yeah, the version we see in in the movies is tremendous. Also, in the comic book, he's tethered to a lamppost. (laughs) For the most part, he is, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. He's using the Gotham power grid to uh, for powerful punches. Yeah. You've also got that open in front of you, though, the Dark Knight suit. What I really enjoy about that is it is a kind of reimagining of what came before but they make mention of the bat symbol Mm. is heavily armoured on purpose and a target on purpose, so people aim for it, Mm. but it's like a safe spot for him to be hit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's an intentional target that he puts on himself. It doesn't really make sense, but in (laughs) comic book logic it does. Absolutely, and that's also assuming that people are good enough shots to aim for his chest and actually hit his chest, not just shoot him in the leg multiple times. (laughs) Yeah. The Dark Knight Returns was, I think, a factor in, in bringing the bat suit back to the more minimalist... Right. Bill Finger original version because in that series he is wearing the, the the yellow oval suit and then it gets destroyed and he's like well I've only got this old depression era one yeah right <laughs> you know yeah. And I've got to go back to just the plain suit so. same one yeah right well do you want to talk about the Silver Age Batman then yes the kind of the blue and the grey the many I think yeah. there, there's well, been there's a, a lot obviously there's been yeah. a few incarnations but I think the one that people remember most the, it's the Neil Adams version it's very it's it's the blue and the grey and it's very streamlined it's, I guess the one we would recognize mostly from like the 70s and 80s I think one of the most iconic versions of that one is there's a version where he, he battles uh, Nemesis Rajal Ghul in the desert and he has to duel, like have, do a sword he's duel with a him. Sword. And, yeah. But of course he's got a sword but no shirt. <laughs> so it's shirtless Batman, hairy chested. It's sometimes referred to as the hairy chested love god Batman. The cape's gone, the shirt's gone. Love it. Uh, is there a Funko Pop version of that? There better be. There better if there is, I'm buying be. it today. <laughs> I think a modern update of that is also the Jim Lee Batman. I'm talking about the Hush era yeah. of Batman. Art-wise, mm. that that is a great storyline. Just yep. get a like a seasoned veteran of comic books, Jim Lee, who does great just, art. Just just great art, comic book art. Yeah. And just go give us the most iconic Batman you can you can mm. muster and just give us some great interpretations of the villain and I think that's a that's an incredible look. That's that you're right. That is the updated yeah. kind of Neil Adams. It's it's again, it's not as blue and gray, but it's no. it looks real nice. But it's got the spirit of it, doesn't it? Does it does have the spirit of it, yeah. I like the idea of a clothy bat suit for some of it at least mm. because it means that he has to be faster and smarter than just like he's just heavily armored and he yeah, right. around. Mm, yeah, for so, sure. So yeah, I like mm. that idea. But mm. I also like all his various novelty suits oh yeah oh my god give us an arctic batman suit yes. give us a uh, that one from the 60s where he's he's been hit in the head and he has to wear a different colored bat suit every day you know that one? Oh my goodness where he has to wear rainbow bat suits i know exactly what you're so talking good about. give us the one that he makes where he fights the predator we did a video on it yes. it's incredible yeah give us an underwater batman suit oh give us one goodness. that's radio radioactive for some reason <laughs> i'll send these over to you they give him the camouflage costume used in north pole crimes i love the idea that like i gotta go to the snow and he's just got a big furry collar on it right you know like and night owl from Watchmen yeah, or right, whatever uh-huh. you know that was kind of a silly thing that used to happen a lot in the older comics but mm-hmm. now they've just kind of made it part of his arsenal so he's like well i need something that blocks infrared light or whatever so uh-huh. he's just got something for everything uh what about the kingdom come suit was we're talking potential future bad yeah, suits. i like that one mm. i like that it's built around the fact that he's broken as well, yeah. I mean, it's mm. it's it's both a crime fighting bat suit and it's a kind of a, a neck brace. It's a, it's a very large neck brace. Part of the appeal of this is this is the great Alex Ross yes. sort of painted art. So that's a that's a tremendous looking suit. If we could talk alternate universes for a little bit, please. There's a few of those that I really like. I like the design of Batman Red Rain. It's it's a Dracula. Thing. Where he's a Dracula? Yeah, sure. it's not really that different, but I just like the imagery of that. Mm. And just knowing he's a Dracula just makes him a Dracula little bit makes, little, mm, feels good, doesn't it? It absolutely uh, does. 
I like the Batman Red Sun one where he just has a furry, a, a furry hat, hat, as we on. mentioned. Yeah, incredible. But that one is also he's loaded for bear. He's built for war, and he's kind of like you know he's covered in sticks of dynamite. And he's, yes, and he's he's not know, Bruce Wayne. He's just some absolute yeah, loose fur- unit. And he's kind of you know, and his cape is all torn and, and weathered because you know yeah. he doesn't have the resources to fix it. And his utility belt's just covered in big like broom handle guns yeah. and just enormous boxes, probably filled with old timey rations and stuff. And he's a lunatic also. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right, yeah. Uh, but also, I think my favorite from the weird parallel dimensions is the Gotham by Gaslight suit. It's obviously Batman to look at it. But and it's very Victorian yeah, era. Yeah, the Victorian era touches. And even just the little thing like, it's just got a weird high Victorian era collar. Yeah. Just like that idea. I just think it's a tremendous looking suit. It's windy up on those rooftops. You know it is, mate. Mm. Yeah. That's one of my faves. Well, I think my favourite is obviously the Zebra Batman. <laughs> yes. I think we should end on the Zebra Batman. Oh man, can we ever? Uh, this is from Detective Comics 275 written by the great Bill Finger, so you know it's got some authority. So this is this is his return to form. Yeah, He's right. like, man, Bob Kane really burned me on the creation of the original <laughs> Batman suit, but I'm going to bring it back. This is going to be the version forevermore, the Zebra <laughs> Batman. And Robin's there. He's like, get back, everybody. Batman's become a menace. In what way? I don't know. He's a zebra. I've never read it. Yeah. Just because he's got all the powers of a zebra, I suppose. Yeah. He's knocking over a lamppost. Oh, man, just like a zebra. That man's hat's falling off. Just like a zebra. Just like a zebra. Yeah. Uh, what about Grant Morrison's? I know that we were going to wrap it up. <laughs> That's all right. Grant Morrison's weird multicolor lunatic Batman. Oh, the Batman of Zura and R. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's People know that one, don't they? Vaguely. Yeah. I think it's yeah. his, this is this is the Batman is so well prepared that if he has a full psychotic break, he's invented a backup personality that hides in his brain so that when that happens, he springs out of action. He's like, well, I better build a new bat suit out of garbage. Yeah. And then it becomes this weird magenta and yellow bat suit. Yeah. Anyway, that's madness. He's got it? his reasonings. Yeah, yeah, does he? Also, of course, Bat Caveman, Pirate Batman. <laughs> yep. I'm just naming action figures, it sounds like, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but I don't think we could move past uh, the Azrael Batman Nightfall series Batman. Oh, it's strictly speaking, is not... It's not Bruce Wayne, Batman. No. Well, neither Terry McGinnis. Well, that's true. So technically, I, maybe he's a clone of him or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Somewhat. Okay, you're, you're absolutely right. Anything goes. Also, this is a dumb video. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Batman got his back broken during the Nightfall storyline, yep. and then he act, uh, he he had a, a replacement in mind just in case this, this would happen. This guy called Jean Paul, uh, who was raised by weird monks somewhere in the mountains, and they built a weird, always prepared, deadly, way too well-trained kind of yeah. psychopathic killer inside his brain and then mm. sort of sealed it off so he didn't know it was there. Then Batman was like, yeah, here's the keys to the Batcave. Uh, and so he built a, an insane... Well, it was in stages, but he eventually yeah. built an insane tank-like Batman suit that was loaded down with, like, flamethrowers and machine guns and stuff. It was pretty sick. He knew what he was doing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a big, curly, blonde mullet. And I say when Batman... And when Bruce Wayne came back... And, and took the bat, the mantle of the bat back from him. I say he was robbed. <laughs> hey, have you heard of Raycon? I mentioned him up top, but look, regardless, let me fill you in. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbud that's on the market, but they don't sacrifice quality. Founded by Ray J and used by the likes of Snoop Dogg, they come in a range of new fun colors with different fit options. So even if you've got weird little ears like me, they're not going to fall out. Look at this. How is this happening? A Raycon science or magic? Plus also they're stylish and discreet. Also they sound just as amazing as all the other top audio brands that you know. I cannot stress that enough. And their latest model, the E25, is their best one yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. So look, if you're interested, please click the link in the description below because you'll actually get 15% off your order. That helps me out. It helps your ears out. They're great. I literally carry mine everywhere I go all day, every day. No word of a lie. If you see me on the street, ask me about them. I bet they're in my pocket. That's all linked below. Rest of the video. But look, if people got favorites, I'm sure you do. Uh, we've definitely missed some. And look, genuinely, what's a good one? What do you like? Yeah, it can be it can be dumb good. It can be good good. It can be a live action one. Yeah. Like we didn't really touch on like the Christian Bale different suits that go from that or the we touched on one of the Ben Affleck ones, but, you know, there's a lot going on there. Do you like the Ben Affleck one where he has goggles? Well, there's two of those, isn't there? Because there's a Future Desert one and the other Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, Future Desert one. Yeah. That's a good one. I, I like, do the like the Future, future Desert, Desert one. one. Yeah. Also, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows that comes out every Monday. Uh, we recently, of course, talked about the new Robat Bat and Bat Bat suit. That's right. And so we do the news of the week and then a topic. Uh, it's linked below. Swing on by if you want to. Like Batman would. Like Batman would and has. Swing on by and shoot a razor-sharp bat disc into our brains. <laughs> yeah. We deserve it. We certainly do. Uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Subscribe to those videos here all the fucking time. We never stop. All right, bye, everyone. Grab that, Jimmy. Guys, we'll see you next week. Yeah.